One of the necessary components of belief is to believe in the last day. And believing in the last day can occur at two levels. Number one, holistically, meaning in general, you affirm that there's a last day and there's a judgment and there's paradise and the hellfire, right? Holistically and generally. And then your preparation to accept whatever Allah and His Messenger, this is level two, have said about the last day. When a person journeys throughout the Quran, you can hardly find a page in the Quran without a mention of the last day and the details about it. Allah the Most High, He alludes to the last day with a great deal of names. And this is of its greatness because every single one of the names refers to a certain aspect about that day. For example, of its names is Al-Qiyamah. Qama means to stand. Al-Qiyamah means the day of standing. People will be standing on that day for a length of 50,000 years, as the ayah in Surah Al-Ma'arij mentions. Also of its names is Al-Haqqah, which means the ultimate reality. Al-Haqq is the truth. Al-Haqqah is the ultimate reality. What absolutely will happen, and you must be positive about, more than you're sure of what you see with your own two eyes. And of its names, Al-Hashr. Hashara means to gather. So it is the gathering. Because on this day, the creation will be gathered in a manner that is mind-blowing. All of the humans from Adam السلام, to the very end. And the jinnah will be present. And وَإِذَا الْوُحُوشُ حُشِرَتْ Allah says, so the taqweer, the day that even the beasts will be gathered. The first of them and the last of the animals. So of its names is Al-Hashr. And this gives us another uh, light uh, of what this day will be like. And of its names is Al-Ba'ath. Ba'atha means to send forward. So al-ba'ath is referred to as the resurrection, that which they are sent forward from their graves, when they are resurrected and pulled out of the dirt. And of the, its names is al-waqi'ah. Waqa'ah means it already came to pass, right? It already took place. So al-waqi'ah means the inevitable event, meaning the one that absolutely has to happen and can't be avoided. It's true, and it's also true that you're not going to be an exception. You're going to be there too. And throughout the Qur'an, one finds that belief in the Day of Judgment is paired up many times, like twins, with belief in Allah. Allah says many times, this is a reminder for those who believe in Allah and the Day of Judgment. Why? Because believing in the Day of Judgment, in reality, is a logical continuum of believing in Allah. How can you believe that Allah is perfect and just, right? And fair and merciful and able if the Day of Judgment is not going to happen? Allah the Most High, He says, أَفَحَسِبْتُمْ أَنَّمَا خَلَقْنَاكُمْ عَبَثًا وَأَنَّكُمْ إِلَيْنَا لَا تُرْجَعُونَ Do you assume, this is the end of Surah Al-Mu'minun, do you assume that we created you in play? The whole construction of this is just some joke and that you will not be returned to us? فَتَعَالَ اللَّهُ الْمَلِكُ الْحَقِّ Exalted is Allah the true king. Meaning what? Allah is far more exalted over doing something so foolish. Just creating you as a joke. لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا هُوْ None is worthy of worship at رَبُّ الْعَرْشِ الْكَرِيمِ He is the owner of the great throne. The owner of the great throne is going to do something like that. This is the meaning. This is why when Al-As ibn Wa'il al-Sahmi, he came to the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, and he took bones, he's a disbeliever in Mecca. He took them and he threw them in the face of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And he said, Muhammad, you claim that your Lord will resurrect these bones and return them to the, how they first were, bring this back to life. So Allah the Most High sent down the verse in Surah Yaseen. And he said, وَضَرَبَ لَنَا مَثَلًا وَنَسِيَ خَلْقَهُ قَالَ مَنْ يُحْيِي الْعِظَامَ وَهِيَ رَمِيمٌ This disbeliever, he struck an example for us. Like he's trying to make Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam understand as if, right? He's telling him, look, you think this is possible? Think, Muhammad. He's saying he struck an example for us and he forgot about himself. When he said, who will give life to the bones after they've crumbled? Allah replies in the next verse and says, Say, it will be given life to by the one that created it the first time. And he has knowledge of his creation. Meaning, why are you using the example of this is dead, it's going to come back to life while you forgot about yourself? You were dead too. And Allah brought it to life. So we say that the last day has a direct connection, believing in it with believing in Allah. And that ultimate justice must be established. Wherein not an atom's weight of unfairness, inequity will occur. 
Even the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, لَا تُؤَدُّنَّ الْحُقُوقَ إِلَىٰ أَهْلِهَا You will surely deliver everyone's right to their rightful owners on the Day of Judgment. قَالَ سُبْحَانَهُ وَيَوْمَ يُنْفَخُ فِي الصُّورِ فَفَزِعَ مَنْ فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ إِلَّا مَا شَاءَ اللَّهِ when the trumpet is blown, whatever's in the heavens and earth will be destroyed. Listen, listen to the descriptions of the Dhul Arsh al Majid. Qala Subhana, Ya ayyuhan nasu attaqu rabbakum, inna zalzalata saati shay'un azim. O humankind, be mindful of Allah. إِنَّ زَلْزَلَةَ السَّاعَةِ شَيْءٌ عَظِيمٌ For verily the tremor, the shaking, the vibration, the quake of that hour is a big thing. يَوْمَ تَرَوْنَهَا تَزْهَلُ كُلُّ مُرْضِعَةٍ عَمَّا أَرْضَعَتْ وَتَضَعُ كُلُّ ذَاتِ حَمْلٍ حَمْلَهَا وَتَرَى النَّاسِ سُكَارَى وَمَا هُمْ بِسُكَارَى وَلَكِنَّ عَذَابَ اللَّهِ شَدِيدٌ When the earth starts to shake, جل جلال الملك قال سبحانه فإذا نفخ في الصور نفخة واحدة when the first trumpet is blown وحملت الأرض والجبال فدكت دكة واحدة فيومئذ وقعت الواقعة when the earth you know like an explosion happens you see the land rise a little bit as its response to the vibration, the earth rises. And then Allah Rabbul Izzah says, not just the flat earth, the mountains rise. And they are shaken, one shake. And this is happening on earth. Imagine the calamity. And mountains, the gigant, will fly around like pieces of scattered wool. And you look up, قَالَ سُبْحَانَهُ إِذَا السَّمَاءُ انْشَقَّتْ the heavens are starting to tear. قَالَ سُبْحَانَهُ إِذَا السَّمَاءُ فَطَرَتْ When the heavens go, the colors go all crazy, like when, when silver is melting, or when oil falls in water. And then قَالَ سُبْحَانَهُ فَكَانَتْ أَبْوَابَ It falls like pieces of doors. And you look at the sun, إِذَا الشَّمْسُ كُوِّرَتْ When the sun has gone dark. When the sun is wrapped up, قال سبحانه وإذا النجوم كدرت and when the stars lose their shine, when the stars start to fly around, everything in the heavens and earth is coming in utter ruin. And you look at the oceans, وإذا البحار فجرت and the oceans erupt. And then وإذا البحار سجرت. And when the oceans explode, as in the waves will burst and then it will be on fire, like it will be an explosion, an ignition. And you don't need to be a rocket scientist. Water is made of H2O and there's oxygen and hydrogen. If they get separated, both flammable and explosive. So this is what happens. The creation changes, the mountains fly about. The earth is destroyed, buildings come crumbling down. Everything that you know is in utter ruin. And it's the most catastrophic day in the existence of creation. So whoever's left of the creation in the heavens above and the earth below, everyone will be killed. And they narrate the story where in the creation nothing is left. And the verse says, Illa ma sha Allah, except for what Allah wishes. As in there are people, their existence that are still alive. So they say this refers to the four grand angels, as in Jibreel, Mikael, Israfil, and Malakul Maut, and the Hamalatul Arsh, those that carry the throne of the Dhul Arsh al Majid. So Allah Rabbul Izza says, let Jibreel die. So Malakul Maut takes his ruh. And then Allah Rabbul Izza says, Man baqiya min al khalaiqi ya Malakul Maut. Who is left from the creations, O Malakul Maut? So he says, No one except for me, Kail, Israfil, Hamalatul Arsh, wa ana abdul dhalil bayna yadayk. And I, your humble servant. So he says, Iqbid ruha mi Kail. Take the life of Mikael. And Mikael falls. And then Allah Rabbul Izza says, Who is left in the dominions? So he says, Ya Rabb, Israfil, 
the Hamalatul Arsh, and I, your humble servant. So he says, Take the life of Israfil. So the blower of the trumpet falls. And then Allah Rabbul Izza says, Take the life of the Hamalatul Arsh, those that carry the throne of the Zul Arsh al Majid. And the Hamalatul Arsh fall. And then Allah Rabbul Izza says, Who was left in the dominions of Malakul Maut? He says, No one except for this humble servant at your beck and call, Ya Rabb. So Allah Rabbul Izza says, Mut Ya Malakul Maut, die O Malakul Maut. And he falls down. And there are some aqwal which he says in, Had I known the difficulty of death, I wouldn't have volunteered to take the life of the living. So for a period of 40, the length of which is with Allah Rabbul Izza, there is nothing in existence. And in the hadith, of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Allah Rabbul Izza grabs the earth and scrolls up the heavens in his right. He scrolls up the heavens and, and then shaking it says, I am the king. And wa fi lafzi Muslim, Aina al Jabbaroon, Aina al Mutakabbiroon, where are the arrogant ones? Where are the proud ones? Anal Malik, I am the king. Ain al Mulukul Ard, where are the kings of this world? And then the voice of the Zul Arsh al Majid, Liman al Mulkul Yawm. Allah, Liman al Mulkul Yawm. Liman al Mulkul Yawm. Lillahi al Wahid al Qahar. To whom belongs the dominion today? Who is the owner of the heavens and earth today? And the same voice of the Zul Arsh al Majid to Allah, the Lord of honor and grandeur. And then the Zul Arsh al Majid in Fa'al al Lima Yurid orders Israfil, come up again, Israfil. So the blower of the trumpet is resurrected. He comes up. And then he tells him, blow again. And he blows again. They're standing up and looking. They come back up. And how are they resurrected? The Prophet says, Barefooted, naked, uncircumcised. Like the day you were first made in the first time. In your natural existence, Aisha said, Radiallahu anha, the embodiment of Haya, Radiallahu anha. She said, Ya Rasul, and look at the concern, Ya Rasulullah, we are naked, the men will be naked. One day look at each other. So the Rasul said, Ya Aisha, the situation is much bigger than for people to look at each other. The sun comes a mile away from the heads of humankind. And humankind are in that heat and they start to sweat. So some stand in puddles of sweat up to their ankles, some to their knees, some to their waist, some to their shoulders. Some people are drowned in it. Based on the wrong that you have done. And how long will the day last? Qala subhana, fi yawmin kana miqdaruh, khamsina alfa sana, 50,000 years. And Allah Rabbul Izzah says, Fasbir, Allah, Fasbir, Sabran Jamila, have good patience. 50,000 years. And you say, but I can't stand for two hours. The one that made you stand here, the one that made you be able to stand and walk will make you stand for 50,000 years. And humankind panic. Humankind panic. And the fear is immense. And the heat is unbearable. And the sweat is covering people. The people will be pulled out of their graves, the first of them to the last. And they will say, as Allah Azza mentioned Surah Yaseen, Ya wailana, O oh, woe to us, the disaster, for those that weren't prepared. Man ba'athana min marqadina, who woke us up from our sleep? This is what Ar Rahman had promised, and the Messenger spoke the truth. This realization will occur on the Day of Judgment, and then people will be gathered. 
the forefront, who outraced everyone, will be in the forefront. Then the people that will go to paradise from the first get after the judgment will be on the right. And those that are destined to the fire, even if just initially, they will be on the left. People will be grouped. And then everybody will receive their books and they will read their books to themselves. Iqra kitabak, kafa bi nafsika al-yawma alayka hasiba. What a day. Allah will tell the people, recite your book. You will not be shown your deeds. You're going to say, I did such and such on such and such a day. And I did such and such on such and such a day. And I disobeyed Allah on such and such a day. And I feared Allah and stayed away from His fire on such and such a day. You will unravel it to yourself with your own tongue. And those that Allah wishes to have mercy on, He will say, I conceal these sins for you in this world and I forgive you for them today. And there are those that will be told, you forgot about me in this world, and today you'll be forgotten. May Allah make us of those that Allah envelopes in His mercy on that day. Allahumma ameen. And then after the judgment comes to pass, a sirat, the bridge will be struck across the width of the hellfire, as we are informed by the Prophet wasallam. The end of this bridge is paradise, and below it is the fire. This bridge is thinner than a sword, thinner than a hair, and sharper than a sword. And it is not solid, meaning it is loose, which adds to it slippery, and then it is dark. And a person traverses, gets across that bridge in proportion to his deeds. Not an issue of skill. Today is a day of repayment, not a day of tests. When the people of paradise have gone to paradise, and the people of the fire have gone to the fire, death, not the angel of death, death itself, is brought forth until it is placed between paradise and the fire, placed there on the bridge. Then it is slaughtered. Then a caller calls out, O people of paradise, O people of the fire, no more death. So the people of paradise increase in joy upon their joy. This, this is permanent. And the people of fire increase in grief, agony upon their agony. And of course, since the day of judgment is of the matters of the unseen, no one can claim knowledge about it or believe anything regarding it except that which has been told to us by the Quran and Sunnah. It's part of believing in the Day of Judgment. Part of believing in the Day of Judgment, you're obligated to believe that whomever claims to know it is a liar. It's part of your belief. You're not allowed to become worried. What if it's right and the possibility and become scared? You're obligated to call that person and believe him a liar. Because Allah the Most High said in Surah Al-A'raf, يَسْأَلُونَكَ عَنِ السَّاعَةِ أَيَّانَ مُرْسَاهَا They ask you, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, about the hour when it will come to pass. Say its knowledge is with Allah. لَا يُجَلِّيهَا لِوَقْتِهَا إِلَّا هُو None will bring it forth at its time except Him. And then later on in the verse, the verse is lengthy. لَا تَأْتِيكُمْ إِلَّا بَغْتَهَا Another point of information. It will only come to you suddenly. No one's going to be expecting it. So the knowledge of the appointment of the Day of Judgment, we must believe that is not known by an angel that is near to Allah, nor a prophet that is beloved to Allah. This is something that Allah has kept exclusive to Himself, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Also the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us that even though that it's knowledge no one knows but Allah, the signs for it have been given to us by Allah. And this is a manifestation of Allah's mercy. You know, because most of us, <laughs> we don't, constantly remember the judgment or remember death. Rather, we see what's in front of us, what we can touch and we can feel, and we believe that we're gonna live forever, even if we don't admit it. The best of us says, I'm not gonna die now. At least I'm gonna go to the hospital for two, three weeks before I die and I'm gonna repent and we forget these things. So he put almost on every page of the Quran, as we mentioned, verses about the day of judgment. And then Muhammad Sallallahu told us, here are signs. So every one of them gets us to what? Hurry up, pull ourselves up. Rush more and more. This is of the mercy of Allah. Don't think that the signs of the Day of Judgment, as some people want to say, are signs that are supposed to get you to become horrified to the degree that you stop working and you sell all your property and you turn your back on the world and you do whatever you're going to do. So of the signs he mentioned, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the hadith you can go back to, inshallah, he said count 10 before the Day of Judgment. 10 major signs. As for the minor signs, they are plenty and some of the scholars have listed them in the rahimahullah, and others uh, in great detail. And they are worth studying, for it increases a believer in Iman and faith on top of his faith. When he sees these signs unraveling every single day before his very eyes. 
And as for the major signs, he mentioned sallallahu alayhi wa that they will occur at such a rate that whomever has not prepared faith before them, he will not be able to catch up. He will not be able to catch his balance and rebound because they will occur at such a rate that a person will be taken off guard. So may Allah grant us a new iman that is firm and certainty that never wavers. Allahumma ameen. But regardless of whether or not you live to see the major signs of the Day of Judgment, we also believe for part of our faith that when a person dies, there is his judgment.